This program is brought to you by Emory University. I'm Rosemarie Garland Thompson. I'm a professor of women's studies and literary studies at Emory University, and I've written a book called Staring, How We Look. Staring involves an interesting conflict. First of all, it's an impulse. It's neurological and it's acted out in our eyes and through our eyes. Staring is actually a natural response to our own curiosity, to what cognitive psychologists call a novel stimuli. And our brains enjoy novel stimuli. They look for novel stimuli. And so staring is itself a very pleasurable kind of thing. At the same time, because staring is a bodily impulse, like sex or like eating, it's very highly regulated by the social world. So the conflict with staring is between our urge to do it and the social rules that say that we shouldn't be doing it. It doesn't matter which side of the staring encounter we're on. People like to stare, but they don't like to be stared at. Staring is imagined as a breach of etiquette, a kind of intrusion, and it also reflects badly on the people who are starers. So it's this conflict between our urge to stare and the rules against it that makes staring such an important and intense and provocative social interchange that makes meaning. Another aspect that staring brings forward is an historical one. The world has changed and has made us come in contact with different kinds of people. When we're out and about in the public world, we see people that are different from us in a way that we didn't a while ago. We're in contact with people. This is a new integrated world. And the people that have entered the world are people that were excluded from the world oftentimes before from the public world. One group of people who were excluded from the public world are people with disabilities. They were largely excluded before the 1960s and the 1970s in the United States by various institutional and architectural barriers that literally kept people with disabilities out of the public world and out of view of the other people who were in the public world. In researching the book, I discovered that most of the studies about staring focus on the starers, and there's not very much done about the starees. I wanted to bring forward the experience and the perspectives of starees, which is a word that I actually had to invent in order to talk about people who get stared at. I spoke with many expert starees, and I discovered that they're much more comfortable often with staring exchanges, actually, than starers might be. And the reason for that, of course, is that they have so much more experience with the staring relationship. So that they themselves actually end up directing the staring relationship in many cases and leading it toward a productive end that they want to occur. I wanted the book to make us think about how we appear to each other and what we think about each other and, of course, then how we treat each other in the world. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.